Hey, it's Susie here, out and about for Rockdown TV with Miss Chrissy. We've wandered down to Balnarring on the beautiful Mornington Peninsula, and we're at the Heritage Hotel, and we found this really cool guitarist, Jeff Atchison. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. How you going? Hey, going? Susie. How are you? Real good to yeah, see it's you. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? Yeah. What a great place. Mm. So you're just legendary because you're one of the greatest independent artists in Australia that I would think of. Oh, really? I yeah. think that's very kind of you. Yes. Well, it's the truth. I mean, you, you're touring around the world. How did that come about? Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a long journey. And uh, I've, I've, been, I've been playing around Melbourne for 20-something oh, years, nearly 30 years. It's, it's a long time. Uh, but uh, as, a, as a musician, to make a living, I mean, part of the key of it is to, to, to move around, physically move around and get in front of as many people as you can, I, I guess. So one thing has led to another. I mean, the first overseas trip that I did was uh, to the US in uh, 93 and, and uh, you know, that just gave me a little bit of a taste of it and I met some folks and then, you know, I, I had the the, uh, uh, I had the the gumption to go back again and give it another try and then again and again and uh, eventually worked up to a point where I had a, a booking agent and uh, had the work visa sorted out and all that. So I've lived there on a couple of occasions and but you're making it sound easy because this is the boy from Malmesbury. Yeah, yeah. Look, it, 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 that's that, where you grew up, wasn't it, Malmesbury? Yeah, Malmesbury, yeah. Central Victoria. I only know Malmesbury for one other place that's there, and uh, I won't mention it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, for it, for the naughty boys. That's the, yeah, there's yeah. the naughty, the naughty boy uh, home there. But that's yeah. that's the local industry. We do do naughty boys yeah. at uh, at Malmesbury. But, oh, look, it was a great place to yeah, grow up. And beautiful. There, there have been. Uh, moments when I've been, you know, maybe in a plane and looking down, going over the Grand Canyon or something, and just kind of sitting in my seat thinking, "Wow, how'd you, you get know, there?" Yeah, I wind up, you know, touring around. And so you were self-taught with the guitar. Yeah, I, I am self-taught. I'm, I'm still trying to learn, <laughs> trying to teach oh, myself how to do it. Heavens! <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it's it's great music because it it, it never ends. You know, the, the things there are to, to, to learn about it. And, uh, Who'd you listen to? Because I'm, I'm reading about you and you're saying you had a limited record collection. Uh, yeah. How limited is limited? Uh, well, I, I guess I started off with one. <laughs> one record? What was it? Uh, well, the, the first blues record I had was uh, Freddie King's Texas Cannonball. And I had it on a cassette tape. A, a fella on you uh, loaned it to me. And uh, and you couldn't get it. You, could, you couldn't buy it. So um, I copied it onto a cassette and I just played it and played it and played it. I'd do it. Yeah, for uh, the longest time, that, that was all I had, and, and uh, uh, you know, eventually I, I bought it. You know, uh, years later, you know, it took a long time. For you, but, but blues records were, were quite rare. You yeah. know, growing up where I did, and, and uh, uh, yeah, but I, I, I eventually you know, sort of added to the collection as, as time went on. And once I got my license, I was able to drive into Melbourne. You know, maybe once a month, I'd save up about fifty or a hundred bucks and yeah. go to go to Gaslight and Batman Records, one of those, and yeah. come, come back with a stack like this. Yeah. You know? So, what was the aha moment? What did you hear that you thought, man, that's what I want to do for a job? Uh, well, I'd, I'd been playing, I had been playing uh, bass guitar for a few years. I got put on the bass because I was I was a terrible guitar player. <laughs> I said, yeah, have this. Hard to believe. It's only got four strings, you know. Yeah. Can't go wrong with it. But it, look, it was it was great because it actually got me playing a variety of music. Because uh, I, I I could hold down a bass line okay, but I I got uh, hired uh, for little jazz uh, groups and country rock bands and rock bands and so I was playing all sorts of stuff. But I heard. Uh, John Mayall's Blues Breakers oh. uh, album oh, with Eric amazing. Clapton, very young Eric Clapton playing yeah. guitar, and just those opening guitar yeah. notes, yeah. and that was it. I was like, I've got to learn that, that music. What's then? I asked them, and they said, Oh, that's that's the blues. That's blues music. So, so that was that was the defining moment. My my path in life. How old would set. you have been? I was sixteen. Yeah. At, at, that, at that time. Yeah. And so I I switched from bass to guitar over a period of. For about four years. I was and still you played with Dutch Tilders. Uh, the, that was my first professional gig. I, Dutch Tilders. Yeah, yeah, legend. Yeah. Absolute legend. And and uh, I just feel it was, a, it was such a great privilege, not only to know him as a friend, but to to work with him yeah. for for that many years. Great, great memories. Uh, great days. Uh, and I learnt a lot. And there's there's things I do every time I play uh, that I I I learnt directly from from, from Dutch. From Dutch. And I I think of him. Yeah, every Fondly. time I play a gig. Yeah. Every you wouldn't time. be alone. You wouldn't yeah. be alone there. 
What's this award you got? Something King Award. I've forgotten. Albert in, King. Albert King. Albert Tell King. us about that because that's pretty pretty special. Uh, yeah, another another great and legendary uh, blues guitar player from um, from the, the US and uh, specifically Memphis. He, he cut all his, his uh, big records at, at uh, Stax Records in Memphis. Uh, and I was sent to Memphis uh, by the Melbourne Blues Appreciation Society. And this, this was uh, back when the, the, the Melbourne Blues Appreciation Society was in its uh, uh, formative, formative years, years, I guess. Yeah. So I was, I was the second musician to, to go to the International Blues Challenge. Uh, Ian Collard from Collard's Greens and Gravy, he, he, was, the, he was the first uh, to go. Uh, so I went in 1995. And played, and the Albert King Award was the, oh, it still is, is the the Guitar Players Award for, at the International Blues Challenge, and, and so I got it in 1995. That's that's what I brought home. So, that's pretty phenomenal. Yeah. That is really quite phenomenal. Mm. So what are your plans? I, I I believe that last time I spoke to you, you were heading off to Morocco. Yeah, I, I, you I, did. I, I did. Yeah. Uh, my wife and I went to Morocco. It was it was more of a vacation than a. Yeah. Than a, uh, a, a music trip, but I, but I did take a guitar and I, I wound up in a couple of uh, jam sessions with some some Berber lads and some uh, uh, Gamawa musicians, and so I really opened my ears up to some some different sounds over there, different ways of, of approaching. Who do you like to listen to now? Well, I'm into I'm into all sorts of stuff. I've got a very eclectic taste. You know, of course, there's a lot of blues in in my playing, and there's a lot of blues in my my, my record collection, but. You know, some some people may be surprised at, at other things I listen to. I've, I've got, got a lot of. Um, oh look, I'm into a group called uh, the Cinematic Orchestra uh, from England, uh, and I'm into uh, you know, a little bit of little bit of hip hop and a, a you know, a little bit of electronica. Um, That's very uh, But cool. also, you know, seventies uh, progressive rock. I love. Because <laughs> I play, I play yeah. on my radio show 88.3 Southern FM. Yeah. Hey, little big man. Oh right, right. Cool. Just happened to tell us about that song. What do you? Uh, well, that's that's uh, got its uh, its roots firmly set in New Orleans. That yeah. that particular song. Um, in fact, you could probably sing a Neville Brothers tune over the top of the, <laughs> the chord changes. But I, I've just put my own spin on it. But that's that's where the feel comes from. Yeah. Uh, but the, the the song itself is is just a. Uh, I guess a, a bit of a rant against uh, certain faceless, powerful people that uh, uh, you feel sort of mess your life up now and again, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, so I'll fix yeah, you up with a song. Kind of whoever you are, you know. We've yeah. all got one of those, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what are your plans for the future? What, what's in the not too distant future? What are you up to? Um, well, look, I've, I've been I've been on the road uh, heavily for the yeah. last. Uh, Gee, six or seven years I've just been touring um, it, it, it seems like non-stop so even when I'm, I'm home in, in Melbourne and I'm, I'm gigging around I'm usually planning on the, the next big tour but I'm I'm staying home for a little bit uh, in, in uh, this first half of the year I've, I've got uh, plans to go to the US and to Germany in the second half of the year but I'm hoping you know, just sticking around Melbourne and, and spending some time with my family to uh, actually finish off some songs <laughs> that I've got bits and pieces of choruses and verses and stuff because I, I sort of get in my music and I sort of write half an idea down and then I'm back on the road again and I don't write on the road I'm, yeah. on the road I'm, I'm just too busy working I'm, I'm just concentrating getting from one place to the other playing the gigs but I, I'd like to finish off these uh, these ideas and maybe do some recording get, get some, some new uh, original music out there so we, we will have that scoop when you get your new album, I guess, mm. on Rockdown Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in, in the meantime, look, I'm, I'm just out there, gang, and I'm, I'm enjoying playing gigs. Because you're one of the I'm, hardest working musicians in Melbourne. Um, well, yeah, I, I love it. I, I really do. Probably Australia. I really do live for it. I, I live to play and I play to live. And uh, and, I, and I love seeing people at gigs. I've, yeah. One of the, the, the biggest parts is... is talking to folks in, in between the breaks yeah. and, and uh, one of the nice things I like about uh, this part of the scene in the Blues Roots scene is you, you get to know a lot of your audience on a first name basis you know so because we had a lot of people say calling us and saying we want you to interview Jeff Atchison 
So I oh, found really? you oh, nice, yeah, down nice. at the Grandview, I think it was, right. in uh, Fairfield or somewhere. Uh, yeah, I play the Grandview. Yeah, that's where we, we found that's, you and right, teed this up. So, yeah, yeah. hope our listeners oh. and watchers are happy because yeah. we found you and we've got Jeff yeah. Atchison. Yeah. Really yeah, grateful great. for the time today. And um, yeah. Lockdown Radio will continue to play your fantastic Thanks, music. Susie. Thank yeah. you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Nice to, nice to see you here. And you too. Alrighty. Thanks, yeah. Miss Chrissy. Bye bye.